from PDAC with CEO Guy Brassa of Scandium Canada. My good sir, welcome. Well, thank you very much for having me on the air. Absolutely. And I'm excited to talk about this because there really are not that many Scandium companies, especially not one with a, a project just like yours. We're going to get into the project in more detail in just a moment. But first, for anyone who may be hearing your story for the first time, can you give us a quick overview of what you've been building with Scandium Canada? Well, Scandium Canada, it's very interesting because it's a, um, the metal of the future, Scandium. Okay, because it allows to reduce significantly the weight of components yeah. by mixing with aluminum. So Scandium aluminum alloy, that's the future of transportation, future of uh, reduction of uh, GHG. So we're currently advancing a project, the only one in the world, as a matter of fact, to the next level, the pre-feasibility study. Yeah, and if you don't mind going over your, your management very quickly as well, because you've got a great management team, and we're going to talk about Scandium more because it really is the metal of the future and what it can do to transportation and many other things, but uh, for your management team really quickly as well. Yeah, we have a, currently a small management team, but highly experienced. If I talk pers about myself personally, the, uh, all of the management of the Nemaska Lithium file for 10 years, negotiation with First Nations, negotiation and signing of offtake agreements, all of the permitting, everything that is related to take a project at the level of preliminary economic assessment up to construction decision. So uh, we've done, I have done personally all of this. Yeah. Pierre uh, Nedby, the president and COO, uh, is involved, has been involved for numerous years in the industrial minerals and uh, high quality material around the world. And uh, we're currently building around this. Luc Duchesne, our chief scientist officer. So we are surrounded by very interesting people and uh, we have what it takes to advance the project. And that's exactly what you need. You need to be able, the project's one thing, management absolutely is another thing. But speaking about the project, let's dive into that now. You've got your flagship Crater Lake project in northeastern Quebec. Why is this project so unique? Oh, what makes it unique is the fact that it's the only primary source of scandium in the world, currently identified, ready to move to a production in some three, four, five years. Mm -hmm. We don't know how long it's going to take, but Currently, the world supply of Scandium is strictly from operating mines and it's as a byproduct. Yeah. In our case, we can increase the, the quantity, bring to the market a safe source of supply in a good jurisdiction because we have to remind people all of the production currently comes from China, 75%, the balance from Russia. So, to this trend, in order to be able to create new products based on Scandium. And I repeat, it's the metal of the future. To do that, in order to do that, you need to have a long-term safe supply source. Correct. That's exactly what Scandium Canada will bring to the market. I make a comparison often with niobium. Niobium, 40, 50 years ago, made a revolution in the steel industry by making the ferro-niobium alloy. Yeah. Scandium is going to do exactly the same for the aluminum alloys. So there's only one way of doing that, creating that. It's by opening a mine like what we have at the Crater Lake. Absolutely, because both of those nations you just said are FEOCs, they're foreign entities of concern, and we're trying very hard to get our supply of critical minerals of the future away from those types of nations, again, so we have our own security, because for anybody who's new to Scandium, you can put the smallest amount into an alloy and make it that much more stronger and use that much less of steel or something that's obviously much more uh, heavy. heavy. So now you're getting something that's lighter, more efficient, more fuel efficient. If you start doing this in our, in our aerospace, in trains, in cars, electric vehicles are so heavy, they need something else there. Uh, and especially all of our military things. You can see why this can be very important very quickly. I'd like to get to something that's, uh, to something that's also important as well. You recently announced you started, you're optimizing your mineral processing to support uh, the next step to your pre-feasibility study. What will this mean for your company and why are you making this step? Well, the main reason I would say is to try to lower the projected cost of production. So obviously the more recovery you have of that mineral that you want at the end of the day, the, the less costly it's gonna be. You wanna be as efficient as possible and with the less environmental issues as possible in your process. So we've been able to, uh, we're currently doing a 600 kilo uh, metallurgical pilot plant uh, test at SGS in Lakefield, yep. in Ontario. 
And uh, the idea is to be able to optimize, optimize and reduce the cost and have the less impact possible on the environment. Yeah, and that's fantastic to hear as well. And it's very exciting as well. Well, for investors who have been watching this, maybe they're already investing in your company or maybe they're here for the first time, like I alluded to before, what are the steps that are coming up here? What are the milestones that investors should be excited about coming on the pipeline in the weeks and months to come? Well, a lot of things are going to happen in the next 12 months because like we said earlier, we delivered the preliminary economic assessment in 2022, 2023, we updated the resource estimate. Currently, we're engaged in all of the environmental impact, social impact, economic assessment. Yep. In view of starting the permitting process, we are in full negotiation with the NASCAPES, the main um, uh, First Nation on which land court we're going to be uh, working. So negotiation being completed to be announced shortly. Uh, we have applied for a very large subsidy with the uh, Canadian the Critical Mineral Infrastructure Fund, yeah. aiming at speeding up the process to get critical minerals to the market as rapidly as possible. Mm -hmm. So we applied for a very large uh, subsidy, with around $10 million, okay. to cover our cost for the next two years, advancing into the, uh, the permitting and the pre-feasibility stage. So imagine tomorrow you have a 14 million market cap and you bring in non-dilutive di non money, 9.5, 10 million dollars, huge impact. Usually the rule of thumb, it's very easy. We have a preliminary economic assessment that came out at 1.7 billion dollar net present value wow. at 10%. The rule of thumb in the kind of company that we have is that the market cap should be 10% of that value. Currently we're trading below 1%. So wow. the interesting information to gather from this interview is that it's the lowest, cheapest entry point one can have for the metal of the future. If you want to compare with lithium in 2009, 2010, yeah. the people that did money on the lithium space initially are the ones who were educated about lithium in 2009, 2010. They made a lot of money because they were the early investors. Yeah. Scandium is the metal of the future and Scandium, is, and Scandium Canada is the only one that can provide that to the world. So imagine the minute we announced that we have an, an agreement for a large supply with a large end user. Yeah. It's going to be Game through the roof. It. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Dee, for your time. For anybody looking for information, we got the ticker right behind us, TSXV SCD. Thank you so much and looking forward to everything that you're, you're doing with it. Just not just this company, but what you're doing for the country as well. So I appreciate it very much. That's my pleasure. Thank you. That's very good.